So this lecture is about hyperbolic function. I need to explain first uh, what is a hyperbolic function. A hyperbolic function is defined based on exponential function. So you can only understand the hyperbolic function well if you understand the exponential function. And in order to understand exponential function well, you have to know what is the natural law. And the exponential function is understood to be the inverse of the natural law. So let us talk about something which is a bit more general, which we call an even and odd function. So if you have a function, general function, you can make a odd function or even function out of a function of f. So for example, if you define a function that is say, uh, I call this say for example g, which is made up of the sum of the uh, function f. One function is f of x, another is f of negative f. So you sum up f of x and f of negative x and divide it by 2. What you get is a new function g and you find that if you replace g by negative g, the function of g remains the same after you permute the x with negative x. So the conclusion is that the g function that is constructed by the sum of the f and f of minus x divided by 2, you get a even function. Likewise, you can have another function which is made up of the difference uh, between the x and negative x you would also be able to find a new function where the new function h that is defined as such is equals to the negative of h of negative x. So you can try to do this. You per permute the f, permute the f in the f by negative x then the h function is a odd function. So that is how you can obtain the odd function and the even function if you are given some generic function of f. So now let us try to look at a function that is the exponential function exp x or sometimes we just simply write as the natural number e raised to the power of x and then the function of f of negative x is just e of negative x. So you can combine these two to form a new function that is the even function. Say for example, uh, power e power x minus e power minus x. You will divide it by 2. You find that this is an odd function. And we call this odd function that is made up of uh, exponential of e and exponential of minus e, uh, a name called SINHX. So the name of this function is called the SINHX and that is also formed from the exponent. Maybe you sum up e of minus x and e of x divided by 2, you get an even function. Then this even function has a name which we call an hyperbolic cost. There is a total of six such kind of hyperbolic function. You define the hyperbolic sign hyperbolic cost from this preliminary definition. Then you write down another four more definitions of hyperbolic function, namely hyperbolic tangent as the ratio of hyperbolic sine and hyperbolic cos. And this will give you E of X minus E over minus X minus 
我嘅第二個第二個字咧就係 is the third hyperbolic function。Likewise, you can also define the hyperbolic. You can define a hyperbolic secant function. Hyper hyperbolic cosecant function. Hyperbolic cosecant function. Cosecant function. Cosecant. I'm sorry that I my pen always get stuck. So you have cosecant function h of x. Sometimes you write this as just c s h x then you also have what you call an cotangent h which is the hyperbolic cotangent. This is the one over hyperbolic cos h the hyperbolic cosecant is one over hyperbolic sin x then the cotangent is just one over hyperbolic cotangent x so we have a set of hyperbolic function hyperbolic sine hyperbolic cos hyperbolic tangent hyperbolic cotangent hyperbolic secant, hyperbolic cosecant. The hyperbolic functions is constructed from the exponential function. So you can actually guess the shape of the uh, hyperbolic function. There is a total of six different hyperbolic function. And you can actually figure out the graph of this function by looking at the individual exponential function alone. So let us try to construct, for example, the graph of hyperbolic x. Now you can refer to the definitions of the hyperbolic functions from the formula given to you. So I show you here the formula sheets that you're going to get in your exam. And you should try to look at these tables and the formula sheet as often as possible because you're going to see and use it in the exam hall. Do you have a definition for the hyperbolic function here? Not here. I think the hyperbolic function's definition is not given in the uh, formula sheets. So you have to remember the definitions of the hyperbolic function yourself. The hyperbolic sign is an odd function. Hyperbolic cos is an even function. The other four hyperbolic function as defined in a very similar manner as you define the trigonometric function of cos, sine, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. The function of exponents is like this. So this is the graph of the exponential function. Reflections of this point about the y-axis and this point will be reflected to here. So you can do the same thing for other points along the exponential function, then you get um, this curve that is like this. So this will be the function of e power minus x. The hyperbolic cost is the sum of e x plus e minus x. If you take the hyperbolic sign, the graph is just a difference between this graph and this graph. If you look at this point, when x is equal to 0, the difference between e power x and e power minus x will give you 0. As you go to x, then the exponential function will become dominant, whereas the uh, e power minus x will become uh, less dominant. When x is very, very large, the function of hyperbolic sine will behave like the exponential function. And then the same thing will happen to the hyperbolic sine when x is becoming minus infinity. The hyperbolic sine function 
will be dominated by the e power minus x term. Graph of negative e power minus x is a graph that is the negative of the green color thing. Okay, so this is minus e power minus x. The graph has to go through this center point and it will be, it will follow the trend of e power x and also power the graph of e power minus x in this direction. So you combine this trend and this trend go through here, then the shape of the hyperbolic sign will then become like this. It will be just a graph that is going through the center of zero and you follow this. So this is the shape of the hyperbolic sign of x. And this is just the shape of the graph like shown on the figure 7.3. That's how you can construct the hyperbolic sine curve. You can try to see if you can construct the graph of hyperbolic cos by looking at, again, the graph of the exponential function e power x and e power minus x. And we are going to sum up the e power x and e power minus x divided by 2. And you find that when x equals to 0, hyperbolic cos is half times 1 plus 1. So the graph would be then going through 1. So the graph would cut through this point, and you follow this trend uh, like this or like this. So we put everything together. Then you expect the, the hyperbolic curve of cos Will be like this and the exact graph is behaving like this okay so this is how you can construct the hyperbolic cause from the behaviors of exponential function and exponential of minus x same thing could also be seen for the hyperbolic tangent and the hyperbolic cotangent so you can construct the hyperbolic tangent graph and it's looking like this you can actually see the trend of hyperbolic tangent quite easily. Let's see how you can um, predict the behaviors of hyperbolic tangent. So what you have to do here is that to look at the limit of x when it goes to positive infinity. When it goes to positive infinity, then this term will become a uh, dropout and the ten hyperbolic tangent term be dominated by exponential term. If you look at this one, then you would see this is behaving like e power x or e power x, uh, then it will become like one. Likewise, in the limit, when x is going to be minus infinity, then the hyperbolic tangent will be dominated by the e power minus x term, and downstairs will be dominated by e power minus x term, then this will become like minus one. So from this trend, it is understood that the hyperbolic tangent function will tend to um, positive one when x goes to infinity. This is what I meant. And the hyperbolic tangent will go to minus one when x goes to infinity. And then you also look at the hyperbolic tangent at zero. The hyperbolic at zero would just be equal to e power zero minus e power zero. And this is z zero plus e zero. And what you get is just a zero. It goes to this point when x equals to zero and the function will tends to one when x goes to infinity. So it's like this. And then the function will tend to minus, minus one when x goes to minus infinity. So this is the shape of the hyperbolic tangent and you should remember the shape of the hyperbolic tangent it's actually easily deduced from the definitions of the hyperbolic tangent function so this is the shape of the hyperbolic tangent that is shown in table 7.5 the shape of the hyperbolic secant and hyperbolic cosecant and also hyperbolic uh, cotangent is similarly uh, shown here as well. This is the graph of the hyperbolic 
uh, cotangent. So I'm not going to discuss in detail. You can try to construct the curve of hyperbolic cotangent, hyperbolic cosecant, and hyperbolic secant yourself. The hyperbolic tangent is one of those functions that is commonly used in machine learning. After we have discussed the definitions and the shape of the hyperbolic uh, functions, the next thing we want to talk about is the range and domain of the hyperbolic function. By looking at the graph of the hyperbolic sine, you can easily uh, realize what is the range and domain of it. The range and domain of the hyperbolic sine is from minus infinity to positive infinity. For the hyperbolic cos, the uh, domain of the hyperbolic cos is from minus infinity to positive infinity because it's defined for all range of x. And then for hyperbolic uh, cos, the range is um, beginning from 1 to infinity. Likewise, you can answer the questions of the range and domain of the uh, hyperbolic tangent and hyperbolic cotangent. For example, for hyperbolic tangent, the uh, domain of it is from minus infinity to positive infinity. And then the range of the hyperbolic tangent is from minus 1 to 1, but the endpoint is not included. Whereas for hyperbolic cotangent, the range and domain is such that the domain is from minus infinity to positive infinity, but the x equals to zero is not included in the domain of hyperbolic cotangent. And the range of the hyperbolic cotangent is from minus one to minus infinity, where the endpoints are not included union with the um, range from 1 to infinity, where 1 is not included. So this range for hyperbolic cotangent can be seen from the graph here. Okay, So you can try to deduce also the range and domain of the uh, hyperbolic secant. For example, the hyperbolic secant domain is obviously from minus infinity to positive infinity. For the um, hyperbolic cosecant, the domain is from minus infinity to positive infinity, but x0 is not included in domain. For the range of the hyperbolic secant, it is um, going from, or the range for hyperbolic secant is from um, 0 to 1. And zero is not included in the range of hyperbolic secant. For cosecant, the range is from minus infinity to positive infinity, but the point of um, y equals to zero is not included in the range of the hyperbolic cosecant. So that is the uh, basic properties of the hyperbolic function, its definition, its graph and its range and domain. So after we have discussed the basic uh, properties of the three of the hyperbolic function, then we go to the next bit, which is the identity of the hyperbolic function. The identity of the hyperbolic function is shown in table 7.5. Its shape, well, its uh, identity is very, very similar to the identity of the corresponding trigonometric function. So the right hand side here are the set of identity, which we have already discussed many, many times. Then the hyperbolic function obeys a similar set of identity. If you can remember all the identities of the uh, trigonometric function, you can easily write down the corresponding identity for the hyperbolic function by remembering that whenever you see a square in the uh, cos, then the uh, hyperbolic cos uh, become the same. And if you look at the identity for the, the trigonometric function, when you see the square 
in the hyperbola in the trigonometric function, then you replace a minus sign in the corresponding hyperbolic sign. So for um, tangent square, because the tangent square comprises of a sine square, therefore when you see a tangent square in the trigonometric function, you replace in the hyperbolic versions with a minus sign. So maybe I should uh, show you an example of how you can remember the identity for the uh, trigon for the uh, hyperbolic function. For example, let us look at this. There is a total of a few identities, but I'm not going to show you how this identity. You can just write down the identity in table um, six if you have this set of identity for the trigonometric function. For example, the most common identity we have for trigonometry is this. So there is a corresponding set of um, identity for the hypo, high, hypergeometric, uh, this, um, this hypergeometric, this hyper uh, functions, hyperbolic functions, hyperbolic functions, I write this as hyperbolic function. So the corresponding terms or identity for the hyperbolic function that corresponds to this is this. Whenever you see a cos square, then the there's no change in the sign of the corresponding uh, square term in the hyperbolic uh, cos. When you see there is a square in the sign in the trigonometric version, then the corresponding term in the hyperbolic function for um, the square of sine has n minus sine. Then the rest will be left untouched. So let us try to look at another identity, say um, this one. Sine to x in the trigonometric function is just um, what? Sine to x is just 2 sine x cos x. So you can write down the corresponding uh, identity for hyperbolic sine of 2x. That is just equals to 2 times the hyperbolic sine of x and hyperbolic cos of x without any change in the sign because here you don't have any uh, square. You don't have any square in the sign, you have only sine, but not sine squared. Therefore, you don't change the sign of the hyperbolic sine term in the hyperbolic version. So let us try to um, fill up the other identity. For example, um, cos of 2x equals to cos square x minus sine square x. So the identity in the trigonometric function is for cos to theta, I call this theta, uh, maybe I just call this x, uh, is cos square x minus sine square x. So this is the identity in the trigonometric function, which is this one. So the corresponding identity for the hyperbolic function is written down as this. The hyperbolic cos 2x is equals to, but is equals to, hyperbolic cos square and hyperbolic sine square. But in the case of the trigonometric function, you have a sine square. So I mentioned whenever you see a uh, sine square in the um, trigonometric version, the hyperbolic version has to be replaced by a negative of uh, sine square for the hyperbolic version. So the corresponding term for cos square x would then be just hyperbolic cos square x. There's no change because it involves only hyperbolic cos, but for the hyperbolic sine term here, uh, you have to replace the sine by an uh, plus sine for the hyperbolic sine square. Okay, so this is how you can easily remember the identity 
for the um, hyperbolic functions if you know the trigonometric identity. So that is the identity that is stated here uh, for this for this for this formula. Hyperbolic cos two x is equal to hyperbolic square x plus hyperbolic sine square x. So you can try to construct or reproduce the uh, identity for the hyperbolic sine again. For example, okay, let's just look at this one. Um, tangent square sine tangent square x is equal to minus one plus secant square x. This is one of the identity that could be reduced from here by dividing it with, I think, with uh, cos squared. So when you divide this identity by, by, if you divide this identity by cos squared theta, you will arrive at this very simple identity. Um, for the trigonometric function. So let us try to write down the corresponding um, identity for the hyperbolic function. It would be then written as hyperbolic tangent square x equals to minus one. Then this is secant square x. Secant square x is one over cos square x, right? So since it involves only cos square x, and does not involve any sine square x, therefore the corresponding term is just simply the same as square of the hyperbolic cos C O S H square x. And this is just um, minus one plus uh, hyperbolic secant square x. So that is the um, identity that involves hyperbolic tangent which is just minus one plus secant, hyperbolic secant square x. So that is the um, formula for this. So let us try to compare it side by side. So I'm looking at this formula, uh, which is the one I write on this screen here. So that's how I show you the way to derive the identity for the hyperbolic function from the trigonometry function. Okay, so you can try to reproduce the other identities based on the uh, original trigonometric identity by following through this rule. So that is what I um, can show you how to uh, derive or write the um, identity for the hyperbolic function. Now, this identity of the hyperbolic function would be useful later when we perform calculations involving um, other hyperbolic functions. Now, this is a proof of the identity. You would prove the identity, for example, um, hyperbolic sine to x equals to uh, two hyperbolic cos x, hyperbolic sine x by using the definitions of the uh, hyperbolic sine function. So here basically you just make use of the fact that hyperbolic sine x is defined as uh, like this, but uh, in order to prove hyperbolic sine to x equals to the right hand side, you simply replace the x by 2x. You replace it by uh, 2x. Then you follow through the calculations of um, the multiplication based on the definitions and simply make some rearrangement in your algebra, then you will find that the hyperbolic sine to x, which is by definition equals to this, will be reduced to this form. And this is just the hyperbolic sine of x. This is hyperbolic cos of x by definitions. Then you prove this. So the proof of this identity it is quite straightforward. You simply slot in the definitions of hyperbolic um, sine of 2x in terms of the exponential of 
2x and exponential of minus 2x make some algebra, you arrive at the identity. So you can also try to prove the identity uh, of other hyperbolic function as well, as shown on the screen here using the definitions. Uh, this will be left at the exercise, left at the exercise, and it should be very simple. So we um, finish discussing the proof using the definitions of the hyperbolic function in terms of the exponential function. We proceed to the next bit. The next bit will be about um, the derivative of the hyperbolic function and its integral. So the table 7.7 .7 tells you the, the, the derivative of the hyperbolic function and it could be easily deduced. For example, this is a slide that tells you how you can obtain the derivative of the hyperbolic sine. Then you can try to do this for the um, derivative of other hyperbolic function. So let us do it um, here simply. For example, uh, how do you calculate the hyperbolic sine derivative? To do this, uh, you just follow the definitions. So here, let us look at this one. You slot in the definitions of the hyperbolic functions in terms of its definition. Then you carry out the differentiation because you know what is the d dx of e power x. It is just simply the same as e power x. And then this will become just this. So what is this? This is just nothing but just your hyperbolic cos x. So now you can easily show that the derivative of hyperbolic sine is hyperbolic um, cos. Uh, then you can also easily show the hyperbolic function cos. This is the section of the hyperbolic cos. Then you perform the differentiation on e power x and e power minus x, and then you end up hyperbolic sine of x. Once you have done that, then you can easily uh, calculate the derivative of hyperbolic tangent, which is just the derivative of the ratio between um, hyperbolic sine over hyperbolic cos. I think this is, is the of generalization by using the um the, the 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 quotient rule for derivative then you can out these calculations you should be arriving at the formula that is the derivative of the um, hyperbolic tangent function so the derivative of the hyperbolic tangent hyperbolic cost can all be derived in this similar manner maybe you can try to let take a look at the formula sheets to see that you have these one of these formula of the function of the function given from uh, the hyperbolic um, sign Um, the slide that is shown on the screen here is just to generalize the result of the derivative of the hyperbolic sine function to a hyperbolic sine function of u. So you just apply the chain rule 
then you can arrive at this more general formula for the derivative of the hyperbolic sine of n function u. So uh, this is quite straightforward. So I'm not going to discuss this in detail. Just to conclude, uh, we have mentioned what is the definitions of the hyperbolic function, that the hyperbolic function are constructed basically using the ingredients of exponential function and exponential of minus x function. Then uh, we discuss the graph, how you can construct the graph of this hyperbolic function, the range and domain of it. Then you can, we also discuss how to obtain the derivative of the uh, hyperbolic uh, functions, specifically the hyperbolic function of sine and hyperbolic function of cos, how you obtain its derivative. It can be derived using the gain, the definitions of the hyperbolic function. Uh, that then you can generalize the directive functions, the directive of the hyperbolic function to uh, the uh, function of u. These are the examples which you could easily uh, go to yourself uh, by referring to the formula that has been discussed earlier on. So that's all for this morning lecture. I'll see you uh, tonight and we'll continue to discuss the inverse hyperbolic function, okay?